The Renault Clio has always been one of the UK's favourite super minis, and in continental Europe, it's even more popular. Last year, the Mark IV Clio was the second best selling car overall in the region, beaten only by the Volkswagen Golf. Now, though, it's time for the fifth generation of the Clio to take up the fight, and we've come to Portugal to see how it stacks up against the likes of the Ford Fiesta and the Seat Ibiza. Look at the outside, and you might wonder whether this is actually a new generation of Clio at all. The Mark IV sold very well on design, and Renault hasn't mucked around with a winning formula on that score. But every panel is different, not least because it all sits on a new platform that will also underpin the next capture and the next generation of Nissan Juke. Even so, there's a bit more maturity to this Clio's lines. It's perhaps a little less cartoony than it was before. The car is shorter than the one it replaces and the roof line is also lower, but Renault claims that clever interior packaging will make it a little bit more practical inside, potentially making this Clio more of a small family car than an old style super mini. It's here in the cabin where the Clio really has made big gains. This is an RS line model with a fairly dark material, but even so, it still manages to feel a bit more airy than before, thanks to this very clean, uncluttered dashboard design. There are soft touch materials where you probably won't even find them in a Volkswagen Polo, and there's plenty of tech as well. On higher end versions, there's this 9.3 inch slightly curved infotainment screen, and there'll be a choice of fully digital instrument displays, including a larger version that can show satellite navigation instructions between the dials. The boot, well, that's a really impressive size for a Super Mini, bigger than some cars from the class above, in fact. There's a bit of a lip to load heavier items over, but lower the rear seats and there's over a thousand litres of space. That's a really useful size. The new Clio's platform is called CMFB, although the suspension layout is pretty standard fare, with McPherson struts at the front and a torsion beam at the rear. The new architecture will allow a hybrid version of the car that's due in 2020. Renault says it should be capable of completing up to 80% of urban mileage on electric power alone. Until then, the Clio's engine lineup looks pretty standard. It starts with a weedy 1-litre normally aspirated 3-cylinder petrol with just 72 brake horsepower, and there's also a diesel addition with 85 brake horsepower and CO2 emissions of just 95 grams per kilometre. Incidentally, there won't be a pure EV edition of the Clio, unlike the latest Peugeot 208 and Vauxhall Corsa. Renault has its latest generation of Zoe to cater for that demand. UK specs and prices have yet to be finalised, but we know that there will be three levels in the range. The entry point, Play, a mid-spec called Iconic, and the sport-themed RS line. Here we're driving the new four-cylinder 1.3-litre TCE 130 in an RS line edition of the car. It gets a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox as standard and a manual's not even an option. It really does feel every bit the sort of premium, refined super mini. The engine's very smooth and it's more than comfortable with a car of the Clio's size and weight. And it's really hushed when you get it up to motorway speeds. And we've also tried the likely best seller, and that's the one litre, three cylinder TCE 100, which gets a five speed manual gearbox as standard. Now it can feel a bit sluggish if you let the revs drop, but in most situations it's just about quick enough. It is also pretty quiet at motorway speeds as well, and its CO2 emissions are only 100 grams per kilometre. The chassis, well it can't quite match a Ford Fiesta's for involvement. This Clio does get a quicker steering rack than the previous generation, but even so, the front end doesn't have quite the crispness that you get in the Ford. Even so, the Clio does strike a good balance between composure and comfort. Body control is more than good enough for a Super Mini, and the suspension, well it can get caught out by really big, sharp road imperfections, but in the most part, is more than comfortable enough. It's hard to give a definitive verdict on the new Renault Clio when we still don't have full UK pricing. This is an area of the market, after all, where a few pounds on a monthly finance deal really can make all the difference. But putting this pricey RS line model aside for one minute, we're told that a mid-spec iconic TCE 100 should cost around 16 and a half grand. That's a few pounds cheaper than a Fiesta EcoBoost ZTEC. Assuming that Renault's finance wizards then put sensible monthly rates in place, then this Clio really does deserve to do well. It might not quite be the sharpest car in the class to drive, but that quality cabin and refinement mean that it should be one of the nicest to live with.